Hello everyone, Gebatron here with a video covering how I think we can make the resource system better in the game Hell Let Loose. The resource system has been a sore spot within the community for a little while now, and what I'm going to propose here is what at least what I think would be a good compromise between what some longtime supporters have been asking for and what we have now. I was asked about this in my recent AMA video, so it made me want to elaborate on it. But in order to understand what I'm talking about, we'll first have to talk about how it used to be and the changes that have been made up to this point. Then we'll talk about how it is at the time of this recording, and finally I'll propose changes that I think could help improve the game. We will mostly be using Warfare Mode as our template, and there are timestamps so you can skip some stuff if you already know how the older resource systems worked. Before nodes were even in the game, resources were generated by controlling sectors. Each sector allowed you to gain a different resource. In this example here, each team would be gaining manpower and munitions because each team controls sectors that generate those corresponding resources indicated here. At the beginning of a match, no one would be gaining fuel as it is in neutral territory. So your resource gain would ebb and flow with how much territory you controlled. Keep in mind there were very few commander orders available at this time. Later on, nodes were introduced over the top of this. You still gained a moderate amount of resources for controlling territory. We will refer to this as our base resource gain. Nodes could be built to supplement this base resource gain. You were not allowed to build nodes in your HQ zone, but every zone further into the map granted you a larger resource gain. So for example, nodes in zone 2 would gain plus 5 per minute, zone 3 plus 10 per minute, zone 4 plus 15, and zone 5 plus 20. You could build all three sets of nodes in any friendly zone and in unlocked enemy territory. So for example, we could build all three sets of nodes in zone 2 and be gaining plus 15 per minute in addition to our base gain. Or, we could build all three sets in zone 5 and be gaining plus 60 per minute in addition to our base gain, or any combination thereof. The emphasis here was on risk-reward. Nodes were not automatically dismantled when territory was lost. So even though you could not build in locked enemy territory, nodes could exist in locked enemy territory, and their gain per minute was not affected. Engineers had a choice to dismantle their nodes and move them up for greater gain. It was also a good idea to look for enemy nodes and dismantle them, as they could still generate large amounts of resources in your territory. The next major changes came when nodes were automatically dismantled when losing territory, and cooldown bonuses were introduced. So no longer could nodes gain resources behind enemy lines. If you lost territory, then all nodes built in that territory were automatically dismantled. This changed the game in some fundamental ways. First, the emphasis on risk-reward was greatly reduced as it became less viable to build further into the map as those nodes were more likely to be destroyed. Second, there was no way to gain resources if you were pushed back to your HQ zone. This contributed to what was referred to as the steamroll issue. When these changes were first introduced, engineers still tried the risk-reward style of play by putting nodes further into the map. This meant that support players and roles that carried ammo were able to benefit from the cooldown bonus the nodes provided. It was soon realized, however, that it was better to place all your nodes as far back as possible and gain resources consistently rather than having to rebuild destroyed nodes all the time. This meant there were no nodes available at the front lines for players to benefit from the cooldown bonus. Then came the system we have currently. Sectors no longer generate unique resources and have been replaced by a base resource gain of plus 30 no matter what territory or how much territory you control. Nodes are now able to be built in the HQ zone and their gain per minute is no longer tied to how far into the map they are placed. Nodes now gain plus 10 per minute no matter where they are. This is an attempt to address the steamroll issue by making sure teams can still produce resources even when backed up to their last sector. But with risk reward being completely abandoned, nodes are still being built as far back as possible and the cooldown bonuses are still unable to be utilized as the nodes are nowhere near where they they are needed for support players and ammo carriers. 
So here is what I propose, and make sure to watch from here to the end of the video to avoid making premature comments. First is either get rid of base resource gain altogether, or maybe make it so you get a base gain of plus 10 for controlling your own HQ. Getting rid of base gain would make resource production entirely dependent on nodes. Of course, each team would start out with resources, but the only way to gain would be by building nodes. This is what I would prefer. But the other option would allow a team to gain a small amount of resources without nodes, which might be appealing to those less organized teams. This way, even if you were pushed back to your final sector and all your nodes had been destroyed, you could still gain some resources for commander orders. But moving on, I'll be using the no base gain example to build off of, as I don't like having a base resource gain. I think resources are something you should have to actively procure and protect. Next, let's talk about nodes. First, increase the amount of node sets we can build to 4. It's currently 3. Then I think nodes should be restricted to only being able to be built in active sectors and only one of each node type per sector. Then I think their gain per minute should be the reverse of the risk reward style of play. Let me explain. Let's say Carantan is our map. In my proposal, you would only be able to build one set of nodes in our active sector, Rail Causeway. Nodes built here would give you the largest gain per minute. Let's just say plus 20 per minute. My reasoning here is twofold. First, it would allow you to gain resources even on your back foot, helping to stop the steamroll issue. And second, it would help simulate the stockpiles of an actual supply chain where more resources are usually available towards the origin point versus at the end of that line. The restriction to the active sector means that it is easier and far more likely that players will benefit and interact with the cooldown bonuses the nodes provide. In addition, it also gives the players something other than the strong point to potentially fight over in the sector. The further you go into the map, the less the nodes produce simulating a stretched supply line. The gameplay here isn't about risk reward anymore, as it is now about max potential. Like I said, in the active HQ sector, we gain plus 20 per minute. Nodes built in the Monthalis sector gain plus 15. Nodes in the Town Center sector gain plus 10. And finally, nodes at the Derailed Train sector gain plus 5 per minute. These numbers are just suggestions. Like I said earlier, this is what I would like to see with you just not able to place nodes in the active enemy HQ sector. But if we were going with the plus 10 per minute base gain route, then the whole thing could be shifted one zone further over. I don't like this as much as it means I would produce less resources if pushed back to my HQ zone where I think the greatest gain should be happening. A quick note on the two commander orders related to resource gain and cost. Instead of having the commander order encouraged tied to base gain, it would now be tied to node gain. Its effect should be reduced from 5 minutes to say 2 or 3 minutes, and should only be available if you control 3 fifths or more of the map, as encouraged should be an offensive commander order. You're doing well, so your troops are encouraged. Final Stand should get the reverse treatment, and only be available if you control two-fifths or less of the map, as it should be a defensive order. Things are going poorly, so you need to make a stand. Next, I think these nodes should stay up after losing territory. Whether or not they continue to produce is something I haven't come to a conclusion on, but I'm leaning towards they stay up, but don't produce. Nodes should be easier to find since they are restricted to the active sector. I think they should stay up and have to be either dismantled or destroyed by players themselves. If you decide not to destroy them and lose your territory again, the enemy will immediately begin to gain resources. This makes it a choice as a team whether or not it's worth it to spend time and energy destroying enemy nodes, or if it's more important to push quickly without clearing your newly gained territory. As far as building goes, I propose you are able to build in the unlocked active enemy sector. If you have a foothold in their sector, then I think you should be able to build nodes if nothing more than for the cooldown bonus. This may encourage more fighting outside of the strong point, which is something good players already know is important. Now let's talk about how nodes can be destroyed. I think you should be able to approach them and manually dismantle them, but I think it should take a long time keeping it similar to how it already works. I think satchels should continue to destroy them, but whether or not recon squads should have satchels is a discussion we should have regarding this. 
I'm currently leaning towards no, as I think this moves them into a commando type role, which I don't think they should be. We'll talk a little bit more about this later. I also think bombing runs and Katusha strikes should continue to destroy them. This gives commanders a new choice. Do they reserve their bombs and rockets for close infantry support, or do they use them in the interdiction role? I think the commander role is currently lacking in these types of tough decisions, so this would help give more depth to that. Now I'd like to talk a little bit about how to make this feel more like an actual supply chain. I propose that any node destroyed further back will result in nodes further forward suffering from a reduction in production except for the plus 5 node which would then gain nothing. Let's look at an example. Say we have all possible nodes built, but the enemy manages to dismantle our manpower node in Mont Halis. Our nodes in Rail Causeway are unaffected. Our nodes in Mont Halis are unaffected, other than the manpower node that was dismantled, of course. This means the munitions and fuel nodes in Town Center and Derailed Train also remain unaffected. But the manpower node in Town Center goes from gaining plus 10 to gaining plus 5. Our manpower node in Derailed Train goes from plus 5 to not producing. If the manpower node is rebuilt in Mont Halis, then all other manpower nodes return to gaining their max gain per minute. This would help simulate supply line disruption and give recon teams more to fight over than just camping arty. This is why I think they should not have satchels as I think they should have to report these positions and coordinate instead of straight up destroying them on their own. They could still manually dismantle them, but this is easier to notice and react to and would mean that they have to work as a team to cover each other. Finally, as far as the engineer role goes, I haven't decided on how many sets each single engineer can build. There was a time when a single engineer could build all the nodes, and I don't think that was good for team play. My preference would to be keep it so only one engineer could build one set of nodes, requiring four different engineers to build all nodes in my proposed version. But I'd be willing to hear arguments for each engineer being able to build two sets of nodes. I also think that passive XP gain should be the same for all nodes, i.e. the engineer who built the plus 20 node in the HQ zone would get the same XP as the engineer that built the plus 5 node in derailed train. My reasoning being that even though the zone 4 node is producing less, it is further into the map and was probably more difficult to build. This would help in keeping engineers interested in building nodes further up. Now I haven't talked to the developers directly about any of this so I don't know if what I proposed here is even possible, but I did try to use mechanics that we have already seen in one form or another, such as we know that resource gain can be changed depending on what zone nodes are built in. Nodes have been restricted from being built in the HQ zone before so my guess is they could do this for sectors too. We know they can change node gains per minute, etc. I have watched Sam15's resource videos and they helped inspire this one, but those are much more in depth. In my proposal I think the devs would just have to change a few things around and it could be relatively easy while I think his proposal would require almost a complete overhaul and reimagining of the resource system. I think of the two my proposal is just a little more realistic in terms of what we could possibly have at this point. I do like his videos and ideas so make sure to check those out if you enjoy this video. I'll link to those in the description. So the goals of my proposal are to increase and further develop the interactions we have with the resource system in Hell Let Loose and to make it feel more like an interactive supply line that encourages making choices. In addition to these changes, I would suggest that we take a really hard look at how redeployment works in Hell Let Loose. With more nodes in places where the cooldown bonuses can be utilized, I think we would be able to abolish the redeploy ability. Right now people use redeploy as a means to resupply and traverse the map. Taking this ability away, or somehow limiting it, would mean that players have to more rely on the ammo boxes and teamwork. I see players frequently kill themselves and redeploy just to get more ammo and I know that is not how this game was designed to be played, nor is that mechanic fun or immersive. I'd suggest that re-upping from a box yields you more ammo than you initially deploy with, i.e. if you deploy with two grenades then you would get three when using an ammo box. Maybe this would make it more appealing, but I do think that the redeployment function needs to change and I think this system would make that change viable. This proposal is all mine, so please keep your criticism constructive and directed at me and not at other commenters. 
Let's keep it civil and constructive as there are going to be many different points of view here. Also, none of this is set in stone, so if you have ideas or tweaks you'd like to make to my proposal, feel free to do it in the comments. That's what this is all about after all, is to start a conversation and see if we can't improve the system as a community. If you like my proposal or parts of it, then please share it wherever you can to increase the chances the devs will see it. Leave a like, make sure to comment with your feedback, subscribe for more Hell Let Loose content. Thanks for watching and see you in the next one.